Hello researchers, how are you? I hope you are fine and doing well. Now in the previous video, I have demonstrated how to install Bose Linux desktop version 6.1 Anoka on Oracle VirtualBox. Now in that video, I have also demonstrated that there are other flavors of Bose Linux. Now in this video, I will be demonstrating how to install Bose Linux Advanced Server. Now with the server, as we know that this Linux of BOSS version is already targeted towards the server desktops as well as the server deployments. So if we go with the BOSS advanced server specification, it supports Intel and AMD 64-bit architecture. It is bundled with web server, proxy server, database server, mail server, network server, file server, SMS server and LDAP server. And apart from the servers, it also contains various admin tools such as webmin, gadmin, php my admin, php ldap admin, and php admin. So you can find on this website that is bosslinux.in slash boss server how the tools will look like. It even contains Wireshark. It is a protocol analyzer which lets you see what is happening on your network at the microscopic level. So all these are various screenshots of various admin suits which are available on boss Linux advanced server version 2.0. The latest version which we are using on this video is 2.0 which is latest and let us start with the installation part of Bose Linux Advanced Server. Now you can see that I have already downloaded the Bose Advanced Server. If I right click over here and click on properties, it is about 1.23 GB. So how to install it, how the different options will be there, what are the different servers and I will be installing all the servers which are available in this Bose Linux in this video. Rest you can do with the configuration part after the post installation. So let us open the Oracle VirtualBox, click on new and now let us type the name Boss Linux Advanced Server 2.0. So you can say that the type is Linux and version is Linux 2.6. These are all the kernel part 64 bits, so it is okay. So click on next. So let me allocate 2 GB of RAM to this. Click on next, click on create, click on next, next. And now let me allocate at least 25 GB. Why I'm allocating 25 GB? Because it's a server and we are allocating all the downloading and installing all the servers during installation. So it is better that you allocate more than 20 GB, 30 GB or 40 GB, whatever you feel like. But I recommend that minimum should be 20 GB. 25 GB will, will be doing us the work. So click us create. So let us click on start. Click on browse. And now let us go to desktop and now let us click on this Bose Advanced Server 2.0 AMD64. Believe me, no need to worry, I am using Intel architecture. AMD64 is just a version, so there is no worry. It will be installed beautifully on all, uh, you can say, processors. So click on open and click on start. Let me close this, click on view, full screen mode. So now you can see there are three options which have come that is install graphical mode, install text mode and help. So we will be going with the simple easy to use part that is install graphical mode and let us press enter. So now the first thing has come that is selecting a language that is English. So click on continue. So the country that is India, it is OK. So the keyboard layout is USA. So click on continue. So it is directing and mounting the CD-ROM and it is loading the additional components. So almost 70% of the installation will be like normal Linux because it's a server so it will be taking somewhat other options also. So I will be letting you know all the options. So it is configuring the network with DHCP and it has succeeded. So the host name will be boss so it is okay for me or you can change your name or you can type for other server etc etc. So click on continue so the domain name will be again boss. So click on continue so root password let me give it. So let me give the full name of the user as my name. User account will be Anand, my name, and let me type the password. So let us configure the clock, which is getting the time from the network time server. And it is recommended that the internet should be properly working on your machine so that all the packages can be installed in a beautiful manner. So now the partition disk, so I will be taking the guiding use entire disk so that it uh, it intelligently partitions all the disk space. With the two partition that is slash, which contains the entire file system, it's a tree based structure and the swap which is regarded as a virtual memory. So click on continue. So select the disk that is okay for us, that is 25 GB. Click on continue. So all files in one partition, it is okay. So now finish the partitioning and write changes. So click on continue and click on yes and click on continue. So it is partitioning the hard disk with ext3 file system 
So it is a disadvantage. Right now, advanced server should have ext4, but it is using ext3. So might be with 3.0 or maybe in the future with 4.0, we can find ext4, but right now it is ext3. So now you can see that it is installing the base system. Core packages. So we will be also getting full package uh, list of all these servers. So you can install all these servers or you can do the choice of yours. But in this video, I'm installing all these servers. So it is unpacking the packages and configuring. So with the 2 GB of RAM, you can find that it is very fast. So if you allocate more than 2 or 3 GB RAM, so it can go even faster. That all depends on your other configurations also. So now it is configuring the Linux image. So the latest kernel it is using that is 2.6.32. So the base system has been installed and after that we will be going with the B part of the server installation. So till that the, uh, the boson is desktop and this doesn't find any difference. So now it is installing the various softwares. Yes, so now this is what I want to show that there's a software collection that is a DNS server, file server, mail server, proxy server, SQL database, which is MySQL, SSS server, graphical desktop environment, which is Genome, web server, which is again the LAMP server, Apache, print server, that is CUPS, laptop and standard system utilities. So I am uh, going with all things. If you want to select or shortlist some of those or you want to don't want to install some of those, you can do it. But uh, I will be going with full them. So click on continue. So now you can see that it is retrieving some files and after that it will be giving us some basic configurations which we can find in different servers. So let us go with that configurations and then we proceed with the graphical interface. So it will not take much time because if a good internet connection is having at your home, so you can find no problem in the installation part in a faster manner. So now it is configuring Perl, XML, Fumatex, OpenSSH, Python, OpenSSL server, Squid proxy server, then library files of uh, Genome, and then the Python. So these days Python is becoming a very good language. So if you're a Linux programmer or a systems programmer, knowledge of Python is a very good thing for you. So it is preparing the genome now, Apache web server, so genome utilities are now installing, so bind that is the DNS server, security the Samba server which provides a connectivity between Linux and Windows. So as a server, it is having everything that is CUPS, that is common Unix printing service to configure uh, Boss Linux as a print server also. Library files of Genome. GVFS. So I can say that most are the library files. So desktop version, it is installed with a de desktop applet, desktop base, icon themes. events uh, you can say the text pad editor evolution that is again you can say the email client then the data server so it is having the postfix mail server so after it installs it will be giving us some other dialog boxes so that we can install various servers and it will be asking for some passwords of mysql and other things also so more things are coming on your way So all the genome settings are already done.
Nautilus file manager it is there so I can say that uh, it is based on Debian so almost you can find all the utilities and all the interface like that which we have in Debian but it still contains some bugs because when I was experiencing it and I was testing this distribution a couple of days back before making this video I was finding some problem with the resolution path somewhat configuring with the DNS server and somewhat some basic uh, con misconfigurations towards FTP server also so make it sure that it is having some bugs it is not a right now a very stable release in this form of servers so till it installs and give us some more utilities we pause the video for some time so now we can see that we have almost done with the installation part and it is some retrieving the files from the internet regarding some language files etc so now you can see that uh, we have come with the server configurations as you can know from the previous slides that I have already installed all the servers so this is the configuration regarding Postpix so I click on the internet site it is just a basic configuration you can even uh, change it uh, when you install the server so the system name will, uh, will be again boss plus boss so it is now demanding the password for the root user so I'm giving the same password of the root for MySQL and now it is configuring the LDAP so again the password of the root again and now let us create the directory so click on yes and click on continue so now it is demanding for the DHCP so let me give the IP that is the machine IP that is 10.0.2.15 which is a default IP address for the uh, virtualization so again the interfaces it can be that is 10.0.2.15 so I don't need any extra switch so click on continue so standalone is a configuration for FTP server so make this only for uh, unreadable route so it is okay for us continue and now it is preparing and removing all the extra packages and running the post fix configurations and post installations so in a few time we will be seeing the main server on uh, our machine so it has taken me about 10 to 15 minutes to install all the server and uh, the main machine and bringing it back live to you so it is you can see that is configuring the dpkg webmin get text lots and lots of packages i can say both linux is fully loaded fully fully loaded so it is preparing the g++ compiler and FTP server so the Java is being installed so let us pause the video again so now we can see that it is on the last stages and it is configuring the MySQL server that is 5.1 version which is the latest version again and it has already configured all the servers GCC compiler Python everything which is regarded in the which is required in the server it has already been done so I can say that uh, since I have started videos of my channel this is one of the biggest server fully loaded video which I have made and uh, believe me it contains everything whatever to make Linux as a full-fledged working server so I recommend that the that those people who are uh, in the process of tasks of making a new server in various organizations rather than to go with Red Hat or either with the CentOS or Fedora you can seriously consider this server because it contains everything what you require from firewall to DNS from DHCP to mail from FTP to LDAP server everything is being there in this server and even uh, penetration testing tools like most important that is called Varshak also so it is configuring the Tomcat server also it has even installed Java and now it is on the post installation trigger that is any FS which means that we are almost on the near completion and now it is cleaning up all the extra files we are done so now we can see that it is installing the grub bootloader it will not take much time so you can see that install the grub bootloader to the master boot record take it as yes so click on continue as the hardness is SDA so it is installing over there so setting up the users setting up the hardware clock and now we can see that uh, the installation is finished so click on continue 
So it is unmounting all the file servers and it is restarting the server. So we can say that uh, the boss advanced server is one of the most advanced servers which I have already configured. So let's press enter and let's see its main interface. So when you uh, come to the GUI, make it sure that you don't uh, log in with the root because why root doesn't log in at this type of security level. You have to log in with a user. Okay. So now let us go with the user, which I have uh, installed. So let me type my name because let me show you that if I go with the root and let me give its password. So you can see that the system administrator is not allowed to log in with this screen. So let me give the username as my name and let me give the password. So uh, one of the bug which I have located in this Linux is that that uh, it is uh, not having a proper uh, facilitation for the resolution. The resolution is somewhat very low when I have installed this boss server. So let us wait for the main GUI. And then I will show you what are the various uh, things which are being installed. So it is fast. I can say that as a server, it is very fast as compared to other servers like OpenSUSE, Red Hat or Fedora. So you can see the computer. So there is a search over here. So I don't require the search right now. So click on applications, accessories. You can find all the accessories which we have in the Red Hat. Graphics we have, F-Spot, internet we have. Again, that's Wireshark and Icewheel web browser. So if you want to go with a Chrome web browser, you can do it. So remote desktop client uh, viewer is good. So it doesn't have office. So programming is for MySQL and sound and video sound recorder. So system tools. Here are the bind, which is for the DNS server. It is for the DHCP server, for Pro FTP server, for R desktops, and for the Samba server and Squid proxy server. And if you go with a system monitor, you can go with each and everything that is with the CPU history, CPU swap history, network history. You can find everything. So it is fully loaded. And if I click on this preferences and if I click on this monitors, you can find that my resolution of the laptop is 13616 to 768, but it is giving the resolution of 800 to 600. So it's a bug over here. Even if I click on detect monitors, it doesn't do anything. So again, uh, the another thing which I have found out about this. So again, administration, it is having everything that is synaptic package manager. So you have to provide the password. And now you can see that uh, the package manager is there. So almost all the Ubuntu based packages are already there. So I have already installed many, but you can install much more with this uh, package. So in this video, I have demonstrated how to install advanced server, some of its bugs and uh, how to configure all these servers during installation and uh, what to do, what not to do. And uh, I hope you like this video. Do give this a like. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much.